<clears throat> so I, I'm here doing this session uh, entitled "Branding Your for a Dream, uh, Branding Yourself for a Dream Job." Uh, I put this together because I've had a lot of success in my career. I started SQL Server Central here. I um, started Database Weekly as well with a few partners, and we we built those sites to kind of help people be better at their jobs. Uh, my partners and I actually we started SQL Saturday as well uh, in 2007. Uh, for the record, I thought it was an incredibly dumb idea, and clearly I was wrong, but it has grown up quite a bit. Uh, I also run T-SQL Tuesday. Does anybody participate in T-SQL Tuesday? So every month we have somebody host where they write a blog and ask you to write on some technical topic. And then we have all these people from all over the world that blog on this topic. So I would encourage you, if, if you're interested in growing your career, it might be something you want to try. And then I do work for Redgate Software as well. Now, I point these things out not really uh, to make myself feel good, but because those are part of my brand, and they have helped me get a lot of success uh, over the last 30 years. So we're here today. Uh, we have all these sponsors that are helping, so they are helping pay for this stuff, so please visit our sponsors. And then the Toronto group is putting this on. So if you're not a part of the Toronto group, just think about joining, coming, and uh, you know, engaging with other people, because these are your people. These are the people that work in your industry. They can help you right, grow your career, find another job or keep your job. My name is Steve Jones. Uh, I've been doing this stuff a very long time, so <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to read anything. Well, I can't sit in the back of the room any longer because I can't read the slides, so uh, this, is, this is normally my spot. But I've been a DBA, I've been a developer, I've managed the groups, and then I've been a writer and speaker for a few decades now. I founded SQL Server Central with partners 21, almost 22 years ago now, and I'm a data platform MVP at Microsoft. Uh, and I work for Redgate Software. Now, Redgate uh, makes database tools, and they uh, bought SQL Server Central and Database Weekly and hired me on, and then they continue to allow me to support the community, and I help them. So my uh, contact stuff is down here. Please feel free if you want to reach out to me, you have questions, you want to connect anything, do that. So our agenda is I want to talk a little bit about branding, why I think it's been helpful for me and why it's been good for my career, uh, give you some things to think about and then give you some practical tips about uh, different things. The things that I've got here are not in any order. Right? You don't do one and another one. They're just a list of things that have helped me. You can pick and choose whatever works for you, whatever might be handy for you. So I start this with the long tails. Anybody ever heard of this? This is an interactive session. Please feel free to uh, participate. This is an economic theory. So I'm an economist by trade in the university. And what this says is that in any domain of products, right, whatever you pick, physical, virtual, service, doesn't really matter, there is some level of demand or popularity for anything. But this theory says that there is some level of demand for everything, whether it's very little or a lot. And so the example I usually give is, um, does anybody know what a record is? Anybody not know what a record is, maybe? Some of you young people, perhaps? So for us old people, we used to go to the record stores when we were younger, and we would buy music in our hands, you know, we would carry it home. And when we went to these stores and we hung out, at the front of the store there would be lots of copies of very popular music. Does anybody know who this is, by the way? But a few of you do, right? Yeah, okay. Bruce Springsteen. So the very, very popular artists would have tons and tons of copies in the front of the store. But in the back of the store, there would be a jazz section or a classical section or an alternative section, uh, an import section from other places. And it would be you know, maybe one copy, maybe no copies of something you were looking for or for an artist. But there was still something there. There were still a few copies of these records because there was some demand for this. By the way, this is why Amazon is a billion-dollar company. They can afford to sell one or two copies of things that a physical store could not do. Amazon serves the long tail, and that's how they've become a billion-dollar company or trillion or whatever they are today. Let me turn my little graph around here. Instead of talking about products, I'm talking about you. You are selling yourself. Somebody pays you to do work. And so for all of you, you have some level of demand. Now, my friend Bren Ozar is very, very popular. Uh, he probably gets hired at any job he wants if somebody wants to hire him do a job. Uh, my friend Ben Weissman is probably up there as well. He's a very well-known consultant in Germany. Uh, he probably can get most any job he wants. But all of us exist somewhere on this scale. And the whole goal of this talk 
is to try to help you move slightly further along this scale. Get a little more demand for your services. Make it a little more likely that somebody wants to hire you for the job that you want. Not the job that you have to take, but the job that you want. Or I want you to stand out in the crowd. Because in today's world, it's a very crowded environment. If you go to apply for a job, it is unlikely that it's two or three of us. It is far more likely there are 50 or 60 or 100 of us that are looking for jobs. Branding is really about opportunity. It's about helping you find a position, a role, uh, a company, something that suits you. Right? And it is about attracting attention because we are competing with each other. We're not cutthroat. We're not, we don't want other people to fail, but we do want to find the thing that suits us best. Okay? I think humility is an important part of this. Like It is a great quality. Probably, many of us have probably worked with somebody that isn't humble, and we don't like that. But when you are looking for a job, you cannot be humble. As technical people, we are often introverts. We don't promote ourselves very well. We don't know how to talk about our accomplishments. But your mom isn't going to help you find a job. It's up to you to put your best foot forward and tell people what you've done. It's up to you. So before I talk about things you should do, I want to remind you of a few things. Here's a, uh, I forget where I got this from, but this is for some hiring managers and certainly for some recruiters as well or HR people. They go online or they try to understand who is applying. Because if they like your CV, if they like your resume, they still may want to know more try to decide. So they are looking to see, are you a good fit in some way? Okay. They also look for other things. Uh, this stuff, maybe not as much for professional jobs, but certainly, do you know how to communicate well? Or have you talked poorly about people that I've worked with in the past or that hired me? I have certainly interviewed people where they tell me how horrible their last boss was and how they did something, played a joke or something else. And immediately I'm like, well, we could just stop interviewing now because I'm not hiring you. Right? If you will do that somewhere else, you'll probably do it here. Here is a um, survey. This is old, right? So 2008, one in five employers were looking for information about you, perform due diligence. 2016, 60%. Uh, 2017, the last time this happened, 70%. We're looking for reasons to hire you or not hire you, to find ways that see if you are a fit or not, because we are all trying to do a great job hiring. Mistakes are expensive. They're time consuming. And so everybody is trying to decide who is the best candidate. And if they can find reasons not to hire you, they will. So I just want you to keep that in mind, that this is going to be a double-edged sword. Uh, two stories I'd like to point out. On the left, Mark Jen uh, worked at Microsoft for a long time, like 20 years. Google spent, I don't know how much time and money recruiting him to go work at Google. And he worked at Google for seven days. He got fired. He got fired for blogging. Now, this is 2005 when this happened. He didn't get fired because he talked about the technical implementations of Google PageRank or anything else. What he talked about was how uh, they would do his dry cleaning while he was at work. And the food was amazing at Google and some of these amenities. But in 2005, Google was a private company. And they did not want anybody talking about anything inside that company. They were very, very secretive. And that was their culture. So they fired this guy. This guy at Microsoft, uh, he posted this picture online. Now, I don't know about you, but there's nothing in here that really says Microsoft or any problems. right? But at the time that this happened, uh, Google and Apple were not getting along prior to Microsoft actually investing in Apple. Those are Apple G5 computers that got delivered to campus in Redmond. And so after the guy posted this picture, security went over and picked him up and walked him off campus, and he lost his job. The point of this is that what you do and how you present yourself matters. Does anybody know who this guy is? Yeah, back when he had hair, I had hair. Now we're both uh, we're struggling. but. He sold cameras under this tagline, right? Image is everything. Image isn't everything, but image does matter. It is important, right? And the impressions you leave matter. So I have a little story. I actually got this from my wife. This is my wife. Uh, this is my backyard in Colorado. My wife trains horses for a living. 
she tells me that a horse's mind is like a jar. And so every day when you go out there and you do something with a horse, you have an experience, you're putting a marble in the jar. So if you go out there and you teach it how to move forward or move backward or sideways, which is apparently something they do often, you put this marble in a jar. And so she goes out there with these plans, and she's, I want to teach the horse something. I want to work with it. And every time she does this, uh, and it works, it's a good experience. It's a white marble that goes in the jar. And often when she's going out there, she's got a plan to do a bunch of things. And she may only do half of them, and she stops. Because she's had a really good experience, and she says, let's be done here. And we know that this has worked out well. Now, about uh, 12 or 13 years ago, she's training this horse in this round pen, and she got thrown off the horse. Okay? She broke her arm. I was, I was flying home from Seattle, and my sister called me and said, don't go to the house, go to the hospital, because your wife's hurt. She got thrown in there, and it was a bad experience. It was a black marble in the jar. Okay? For months afterwards, she was terrified. The horse was terrified. She couldn't ride it. It took a long time to get over that. And the point of this is that we all do things well, and we all make mistakes, right? We have to own those and beware. But do we want to have more mistakes, more bad things, more bad impressions we have, or do we want to have more good impressions? So branding is about balancing that out and trying to make sure that you are presenting your best foot forward and that you also own your mistakes or the things that haven't gone well. So now that I've scared you, this was, uh, I think, 2020. Not doing anything in this business can be a problem. Not being visible at all online can be a problem. There are plenty of people to fulfill any job. So if I have information about you and you and you, and I don't have information about all of you, I am more likely to make a decision on you because you're an unknown quantity. So being anonymous on the web, you just have to be a little bit careful of that because we're in technology. I expect you to have an email address. I expect you, if you write code, to have written code online, something. It right? does matter. The other thing, so this is a common question. This is actually a friend asked this question in an interview. This is the actual answer my friend got. Um, this is not, in fact, the correct answer. If you don't know the correct answer, then ask somebody near you after this. <laughs> but. The thing you should keep in mind is that branding is only part of what we do, okay? We are practicing a craft here, and you should be becoming better at your craft over time. All of you are here today. You've taken your Saturday away to learn something, so I assume you want to become better at your craft. That is important, but that is only part of the job. Branding is another part of this job. All right, any questions, concerns? All right, so let's keep going. So practical things. Uh, these aren't in any order, as I said. Pick and choose. Do what might work for you. Try something. Feel free to drop it. Try something else. Uh, you can do these publicly or privately. So I do have some people that, um, while they may have some stuff on the Internet, they don't want to blog on the Internet or uh, they don't want to speak. But they will do these things privately, either internal in our company or privately, and then present them. So I have some friends that are consultants. They keep track of all their projects, everything they've done. And when they talk to a prospective client or somebody is interested in them, they can give them a portfolio that says, here's all the things that I'm really good at. Here's the things that I've accomplished in life. Right? They don't want to put that out publicly, but they can do it privately. And you can do the same thing with many of these items. So I start with resumes and CVs. Uh, I was talking to, I don't see Simon, but I was talking to a couple people earlier that hire people and asked them, how long do you look at a resume? Any guesses what they said? 30 seconds. Yeah, they actually said up to a minute or maybe two, but 30 seconds is quite common. Uh, when I talk to a lot of people, uh, they say you get 30 seconds. So that means that all the time you spent crafting this lovely one page resume or two page resume or something, they're unlikely to get through it. Okay? So you want to keep that in mind that the impression that you make here, it needs to be short, it needs to be human readable. Remember, I'm old. Many people that hire people are old like me. So if you put three-point fonts on there, I'm just going to throw it in the trash can. I'm not interested. I know I can zoom in and stuff, but it's just annoying. So it should be easily readable. Great way to do it is take your mom and dad. You can hold up resume like this, say read it, 
you get 30 seconds, and then we take it away and say, what did you learn about my career? Do it with your friends. Do it with your coworker. Because that's really, you've got to make an impression in that 30 seconds. What will they see there? So the laundry list of technologies is not necessarily important for them to read, but it does need to be there somewhere because they often search or they're looking for something in this area. But in my 30 seconds, do I want to say uh, C Sharp, Python, Java, SQL, Oracle? Do I want to put that there or do I want to say something else? You want something that catches their attention and makes them think this would be a great candidate for this job. Okay? Uh, include links. Almost everybody I've talked to will be lazy and click on a link if it's there, which means you can drive them to your GitHub for code. You can drive them to your blog. You can drive them anywhere you want to impress them about the things that you are good at, okay? Uh, be professional here. This is your professional thing. Please include contact information. Be surprised how many resumes I get that have a name. <laughs> and while it's wonderful to have your name, it does not help me if I'm interested in you <laughs> at all, okay? Especially if I have to go ask somebody. Uh, please don't try to be funny. I've, I've got a link in here. Uh, most of you are not funny. Clearly, you're not even answering my question, so you're not funny. But if you're funny, there is a comedy club in Toronto. I would love to have you on probably Wednesday night, but this is not the place to do that. Remember that somebody's busy. They're trying to get through this. They're trying to find candidates. Be professional here. Uh, cover letters are a good idea if you can customize them. A generic cover letter looks like a generic cover letter, but I've always gone out of my way to find out something about the company or, if possible, the person that's going to look at this that hire me. And then write just a short paragraph or two that says, this is why I'm interested. I'd be good for this position. Okay? There's plenty of ways to do, learn how to do this. Please check for grammar and spelling and commas and periods and all that stuff because it does matter. And then there are recruiters. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty here in Toronto. I think recruiters are a great resource looking for a job. They get paid by the company, not by you. So you should not have to pay somebody to find a job. But they can put your name in front of lots of people that you might not otherwise be able to reach. So it's something worth considering. Uh, the online counterpart to your resume is having a profile. So rather than a, a document or a piece of paper that you send out, it's having a place where you can kind of describe everything you've done. So there are lots of places you can do this, but this is really kind of a portfolio of everything you've accomplished in your career. Again, you want somebody to look at it for 15, 20, 30 seconds and go, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm proud of. This is what I've been doing lately. It's the kind of thing. You, you can keep the information important and relevant to what kind of job you want. Maybe not necessarily the job you have, but what you want to do. Right? You want to lead people along to the direction you want them to go. Now, LinkedIn is very popular for this, but there's plenty of ways you can do this anywhere you want. The important thing is, again, put it on your resume, send it to recruiters, send it in, make people click on something you've sent them. That's what we want to do. I say give them one because they'll find one. You never know what somebody else has posted about you on the internet. Probably, especially younger people, somebody has posted something about you that you are unaware of. And I've got an example in a minute. But you want to be able to explain whatever has happened in your life and your career. What things have you done, right? good or bad? Right? We all make mistakes, but we want to learn from them and grow from them and have experience. Again, be professional here. Um, I use the test here. So when I was uh, 17, I had a mentor that told me that if I wrote something in the company, right, memo and email, whatever, uh, and this was peered on the front page of the Washington Post tomorrow, how would I feel? Yeah. Or the Toronto Star, is that right? Do you still have that? Does it still come in paper form or no? Yeah. Oh, okay. So same thing, the Toronto Star. Uh, how would you feel about that? Right? Because you want to be proud or at least comfortable <laughs> with something you've sent out. I find it far too easy in the modern world that for us to present a much worse version of ourselves online. Where some of you get mad and you're banging on a keyboard with all caps and you're angry. When we communicate with others, when we talk to others, we send things around, we should be proud of that. Or we should stand behind it, which means we should put our best foot forward. I don't think about newspapers so much. More I think about what would my kids think if they saw something, or what would my mom think. That's usually a good test for me. Again, have contact information so I can find you. 
be careful of identity information. Right? Bad people on the internet, we know that. So uh, I don't know in today's world anybody cares about your snail mail address for the purposes of trying to find out who you are. Obviously, you need your paycheck to go there or something, but most of the time, just be careful of identity information. Here's my example. David Reed had a blog here called Read Me. Uh, he worked in SQL Server for a long time, and then went into Xbox. He mentions me by name here. There's nothing wrong, but I had no idea he posted this. Right? It could have been bad. It could have been a poor taste joke. could have been anything. The thing was, I just have no control over what anybody else does. And it wasn't for months later that somebody pointed this out and said, uh, David was writing something about you. So you want to be aware of what's going on with you. Now, one of the things I recommend, Google Alerts, Bing has something similar. You can write a search on yourself. And they will run that search over and over again. When they find results, they'll email you. So Steve Jones is not great. Uh, Michael Swart might work better, right? I'm not going to try, but your name probably be fantastic in Google. Right? It's very easy, right? So if he just puts his name, he's got he's got four, right? And anybody who writes anything about him, it's showing up. <laughs> but it's a good way just for you to understand. The other thing is have this profile ready. I can't tell you how often I've been at SQL Saturday or somewhere else where somebody hears about a job and then they get a chance to impress somebody right there. Like Deepa Carr was here. He said they're hiring at um, Omer's, Omar's. Yeah, there he is. Um, they may give you a resume. Anybody say they're interested? Like he's looking for data engineers. Some of you might need a job. Like I would have been over there like, here's my resume if I was looking for a job. Because you never know. To my wife, before she trained horses, she was in technology for 20 years. She was in speech. She worked for, I think, uh, four, four or five companies, had about six or seven jobs. In that 20-year span, she sent out more than one resume one time. Every other time, somebody that she had worked with, a manager, a coworker, somebody who was impressed with her said, I've got a job. Give me your resume today. I'll put it in front of the hiring manager, and we'll talk about it. She got multiple jobs like that. It's unbelievable how well that works, but being able to be first matters. Because if I have to look at 50 resumes, do you think I spend more time on the first one or the last one? It's a trick question because I'm not reading 50 resumes. <laughs> I can read about 25 and I'll quit. But that's important. The other thing is you should update this regularly. You should kind of keep your resume, your CV, your profile somewhat current because you never know when an opportunity will present itself. Or you never know when something would happen like this. I actually got this off LinkedIn from a friend that uh, right before the pandemic, he posted this. Of course, said, I'm looking for a job. Uh, this could happen any day, unfortunately. Right? The great thing is we can work almost anywhere. Right? We have a lot of flexibility in what we do. The downside is, well, so can other people. So if somebody doesn't like us, they might get rid of us too. Or somebody might buy us. Uh, hopefully in Canada, this is less of a problem. In the US, this is a bigger problem. All right, questions at all? All right, so let me keep going and networking. More and more as I go through life, I think this is the most valuable thing you can do. So if you did nothing else on my list, this is probably the most valuable thing you could do. So all of us have probably had a piece of software or a product or a service that we our company has implemented and we can't understand how anybody paid money for this thing. Can't understand how somebody got paid to build this thing. Uh, but do you know why you're thinking those thoughts? It's because somebody sold somebody this product. Like it or not, we don't live in a meritocracy. There's no meritocracy anywhere. You know, you could say uh, football or baseball or basketball is, but it's not because it's about those that get the opportunities and that the coaches like and that want to work with. It's not about who is the absolute purest best. And that goes in anywhere. If it doesn't happen in sports. definitely doesn't happen in our business. Right? I'm sure all of you have been places where you worked with somebody or some, somebody not laid off or somebody laid off, and you're like, why that decision? It doesn't make sense. It is often not about your technical skills. We are social people. And how we work together, how we bond with each other really matters. That's what networking is. So, what's your name? Partha? Uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm a, a business analyst. 
like business data governance specialist, they call it. But oh, okay. So you keep data safe? Yeah. yeah. And you work here in Toronto? Yeah. Okay. That's networking. You guys can all do that. I know it's scary. It sounds horrible. But that's really what it is, is taking a minute to introduce yourself, say hi, ask somebody what they do, right? It, it feels a little like dating, but it's not dating, right? It's trying to make friends. It's trying to just get to know somebody. And, you know, I, I may not see him. Hopefully, I'll come back next year. I mean, I probably will remember him. Right? If somebody asks me about data governance, I will think of him because I didn't met any of the rest of you. It really does matter. This is about relationship building, and that is how a lot of things get done. Hiring, making decisions on who goes to projects, bonuses, reviews, uh, who we keep and let go. Anything that happens in the world really happens with relationships, and that is a key thing. And that's what networking really is about, building those things and maintaining them. Uh, this quote about... Uh, EY, there used to be one of the big accounting firms, now they're just a big consulting firm. Uh, they have this thing, they're increasingly using their own workers to find new hires. Okay, Some of you may have seen this in your company where they give you a bonus if you refer somebody and they stick around. Um, Ernst & Young, they want to increase their proportions that come from these referrals. And back in well, I don't have uh, 2013, 45% of their non-entry level hires came from Networking. Because I don't refer somebody if I don't think they can do the job. Because if they don't do the job, then I may have to do the job. Or uh, nobody else will like me any longer. They'll stop listening to me. Hiring somebody is a process that's troublesome, expensive, and time consuming. We don't want to make mistakes. People that work for us are likely to refer people that they want to work with. They're likely to fit in the culture somehow. Michael's a friend of mine, but if, if I didn't think he was good or wouldn't fit in, I wouldn't refer him to my company. I did, actually. They didn't hire him, but that's not his fault or my fault. Mostly because we just we don't want to hire Canadians for some reason. Now we know we can't still. Not for what you do. By the way, Michael would be a great hire. I don't think he's going to leave where he is, though. He's pretty happy. It's about interacting with people, just being polite. Uh, maybe more important, so... I, uh, I have kids. I deal with. I coach uh, high school kids as well in sports, and so one of the things I always talk to them about is you should know how to introduce yourself and say hi, but more importantly, you should know how to walk away too. <laughs> like that is a skill, and it is an important thing to learn. Uh, you know, knowing how to extricate yourself from a conversation with your boss without upsetting him or her is a good skill to have as well. So learning to just get to know people a little bit. And it's not even social, right? It could be about business or it could be about data. We are here to talk about data. So you might ask somebody, did you understand Simon's talk on the data lake? Or did you ask understand something else? Or what do you think? Or are you using this? Or right, any number of things. It's just about being friendly. Okay. Now, you're here today. These are your people, your community. Almost everybody here is local-ish in the area. These are the people you should meet should not just sit with the people you know you came with. Meet three, four, five people today. Just say hi. Learn how to spend two, three, four minutes chatting with them. And then learn how to walk away. Right? It's a valuable skill. Online networking is no different. Uh, I've got lots of friends that I've met online first and then uh, met them in person. I think we probably met online first. You know, And then I've met friends, like I've known Michael for years, but... You know, we communicate on we communicate mostly through Twitter, but <laughs> communicate online as well. You know, it is still a way that works well. Uh, I miss people. I'm glad you guys are live. <laughs> like, it's so good to see your faces in a room. But online networking can help and work as well. And if you want to get started, things uh, there are things like the SQL Help hashtag on Twitter or LinkedIn where uh, you could get a Bren Oza or somebody else to answer your question that you're struggling with, or Michael, or somebody me, somebody else. Again, social networking, watch out for identity information, right? Like, be aware of that stuff. Um, check with your family, right? Who, who matters in your life? Your parents, your spouse, your partner, your kids, right? Like, it's just a polite thing to do uh, to, to let them know what's going on. And then be professional. So you, you all have different interests, right? Political, sports, hobby, whatever. Um, if you're going to try to brand yourself on social media, saying, I am a data professional of some sort, be that. Be professional, right? So if you wouldn't say it to somebody's face, you wouldn't say it at work, don't say it. If you have other hobbies, other things that matter to you, you know, you're 
Okay, you hate the prime minister, you love the prime minister, whatever thing it is, do it, do it for somewhere else, right? But this is something for your career. Be professional here. Be, uh, be aware of what's going on there and participate. Right? If you want to do this, participate because uh, the brand is like a friendship. You want to maintain it over time. How, how do you, rather, like, what's the boundary between bragging about yourself and, and like, why networking? Like, I, I end up in networking events like, like a wallflower. Or like I try to say something and I keep on saying that. How do you find a balance that I don't want to say that it's uncomfortable to be too brag about it? Yeah, all right. So he's uncomfortable networking. Do we brag or do we sell ourselves? What do we do? It's really what I just did with you, right? Like networking is about showing an interest. So first of all, be real and honest, okay? Because if you're lying about your intentions. People will pick up on that. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but it falls apart. So it's more just showing an interest. Right? Like when I ask you the question about keeping data safe, it's because I find data governance interesting. And it's really about more asking somebody else something and then letting them ask you. It's also learning how to not talk too much. Right? Like that's a skill. I typically don't have that problem. My wife does. Like she talks. I'm glad she's not here and this isn't recorded. but. <laughs> Uh, you know, I made a mistake one time. She was trying to tell me a story, and then she said this thing about the story, and then this thing that was related to the story, and this thing that happened. I was like, "Could you like land the plane, please?" And she was really mad. But I was like, Got to learn how to stop talking to people, right? That's a skill in and of itself, because I guarantee you can corner your boss, and you can sit there and talk to him or her, and at some point, he or she is going to be like, "I wish he would shut up and go do some work." So part of it is. It's not about bragging or selling yourself. It's about showing an interest in somebody else or showing an interest in a topic or the subject that's happening. And if there is no more interest, then walk. Thank you very much. Good to meet you. Or I've got to go. Or my phone rang. Right? Like, you can lie. Right? I'm a big fan of lying in many ways. Not on your resume or career, but <laughs> I do lie about certain things. All right, let me keep going. I don't forget. Where did I go? Because I'm clicking on stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, volunteering. So volunteering is, to me, it's been one of these valuable things as somebody that hires people that it shows me that you're willing to do things that you don't have to do. You're willing to do more than I asked you to do. Because I don't want to have to micromanage you and tell you every single thing you have to do. I expect you to bring some knowledge, some initiatives, some things to the job. Okay? And volunteering is one of those things because you don't have to do it. Now, I think everybody should volunteer at some point in their life, but it's time and place. right? Might, might be when you're young, might be when you're old, might be something else. Pick and choose something that matters to you. But doing this can be helpful. So you can do this at work. You could do it online. You know, you could answer questions online, Stack Overflow, SQL Server Central, whatever. Um, you could build software. You could do volunteering in an organization that's important to you. Um, charity, uh, religious, faith, sports, whatever. They're all different things that matter. So in, in terms of this, I used to be a scout leader for Boy Scouts. And me taking 10 boys out in the woods and trying to teach them how to set up a campsite and cook dinner is not a lot of different than trying to get 10 of you to build a piece of software. It's really not. There's very similar skills involved uh, in trying to get people to work together and accomplish something and push to a goal. So these things matter. There are a lot of organizations, charities, churches, whatever, that need technical help. They need people to do microphones or run PowerPoint or whatever thing. Like you can volunteer your skills in some way and make the world better. You can also do it at work. So years ago, I worked at a uh, power plant, and uh, I worked on a network team. And there were four of us on the network team, and we had this lady that um, she was a secretary assistant. And she had to compile all these reports every month, and she was struggling. She couldn't do it. And so she'd call us up every month, and we'd see the phone with caller ID, and we'd pick it up, and we'd give it to our friend, and we'd let him take the call. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and after a few months, you know, I realized, A, this wasn't going away, and it wasn't getting better. So I actually took her lunch. You know, we had a cafeteria and things. I got lunch. I walked over to her desk, sat down with her, and I spent a week or two at lunch teaching her how to do things and trying to explain it to her one-on-one. -on -one. So I wasn't in a hurry. I'm not trying to just close a ticket. I'm, not, I'm just trying to spend time and teach this lady something. And at the end of the two weeks, she could do this stuff, and she stopped calling us, you know, or rarely calling us. And it made everybody happier. You know, it made my boss happy. And I reminded him at the review, and he was like, wow, that was a really useful thing you did. And it, I wasn't really paid for this, right, because I took time out of my lunch hour. But it was a volunteer effort that I just made on my own to go, let's make something better. 
And I think all of you could do something like that at work where you go help somebody else, right? Most people struggle to write queries or get data together or put it in a report or write any number of things. You could make their life better in some way, help them out. It could be a big deal. Again, don't do this if you don't want to do it. Like, be genuine. Pick a cause that's important to you and, and participate. But it's something you should talk about when I'm looking for a job or when it could come up as a story. It's not something you should necessarily brag about, talk about any other time. But again, this is not the time to be humble. This is the time you have to promote yourself. The flip side of uh, volunteering and going there is that I may have to ask for help myself. How many of you run into a problem you didn't know how to solve? Wow, not many of you. Huh? You guys must be really smart. Because I run into problems every week I don't know how to solve. <laughs> Mr. Google is a good friend of mine. Years ago, a friend got me an interview with Raytheon uh, to go to the South Pole, actually. And uh, I walk in this conference room, you know, big conference table, 12 seats. And I sit down, my friend sits down, and then 10 other people file in and go around the table. And it, they get to ask Steve questions, right? So the first gentleman over here says, what is ACID? Now, in terms of databases, hopefully you all know what ACID is. Right? But I said it's atomic and it's consistent. And then I was like, hmm. I don't know. Good thing you weren't there. That would look really dumb. But what I said was, I don't know the word, but I remember what it has to do with, right? It has to do with transaction. It has to do with separation, ensuring that we have data integrity, oh, all, all the stuff, right? I can go look it up on Google. I know how to go find the word. But the, you know, I knew the concept. But more importantly, I could explain how I would figure that out. There's nothing worse for a boss is that I ask you to do something and you spend a week spinning on it, not knowing how to do it, and you never ask for help. And we wasted all this time. I want you to make an honest effort. I want you to try. I certainly don't want you to repeat the same mistake. Right? If we, if we go over copy-only backups this week, then you should know copy-only backups next week. But I also know that if you can't solve the problem, you should ask for help. We all need to ask for help. We all need support in the world, whether that's at work in our lives. And knowing how to do that is important. And having examples and stories of this can become important. You can put it on your blog, you can talk about it in interviews. They become ways that you show I can grow and learn as a person, right? Which is what we need you to do because, like the Azure guys, release something every six days, and we have to figure it out at some point. So knowing how to research and grow and learn is important. The other thing we need is leadership. So. Leadership is one of those really weird things to quantify or to say what it is. What I would say is leadership is the art of getting somebody to do something when they have absolutely no reason to listen to you. You have no power. Okay? Like, my kids are all adults. I can kind of make them do stuff still. Right? Like, uh, you know, I, I still pay some bills so I can force them to do things, but that's not leadership. Right? That's kind of bullying, right? Or that's uh, applying pressure, blackmail, maybe, I don't know. But really, it's more about if a group of us are together, can I convince you to do something? Can I find a way to make you see my viewpoint? Can I get you to try something because I've made you think about it a certain way? Right? We all need that. We need that in teams. Managers love this because it means less things for them to do. Right? Because often what we find is we put three of you in a room, and we get four opinions and five solutions, and then we can't decide what to do. And we need one of you to take charge and go, let's, this is why this is better. Let's do this thing. Okay? And it's important. Now, I've had a lot of managers in my life. Most of them were not leaders. A few of them are. Uh, but you can certainly be a manager and learn to be a leader as well. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. But displaying these leadership skills is important. Uh, you can be a project leader, which means uh, you don't get paid anymore, but you get to tell everybody to work on this stuff. Uh, but being good at that, convincing people to do it, not having them push back or avoid the work or anything else is a skill as well. Or you could be a thought leader. Like that's that's a lot of what I do is I just talk about stuff and you guys listen and I get some of you to do some things. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't have to be in technology. Like I said, uh, me going to teach Boy Scout stuff is a lot like teaching other people. And th those are examples I've used in interviews where I can say, here's how I uh, teach a skill or here's how I get people to coalesce around an idea. Because those are valuable things that we need inside a company. Uh, I, I don't have it here. I don't have the other things. You should be documenting your efforts somehow because uh, at the end of the year or when the interview pops up or anything else, nobody else is going to remember this stuff. 
Your boss isn't going to remember it. Your mom won't even remember it. Right? I don't remember stuff. So keeping track of this stuff does become important. All right, questions on leadership? You guys are super quiet. You guys are worse than English audiences, really. All right, uh, who reads blogs? Quite a few of you. Who writes blogs? Quite a few less of you. <laughs> uh, we're a little skewed towards the uh, 90, 90 or so. But um, this is what I've seen. About 10% of the people are just asleep at this point. And they don't care. But um, most people read blogs and they learn things, right? And that includes hiring managers and HR people and others. But very few people write blogs. So who stands out when I go to find out more information? If I try to understand that you know something about data lakes or Power BI or anything else. I can take your word for it on your resume. I could interview in person, but I could also see what you've documented as well. You can stand out quite a bit by just putting a blog together. I'm not quite like other people in that. I think the blog is about you. It's not about you trying to be the guru, the Brenos are, the next Brenos are, or anything else. It's about you trying to chronicle what you've done in your career, what things you've learned or solved or anything else that's in your career. Right? And over time, this kind of does provide that interesting chronicle of things that you're interested in, things you've worked on, uh, things that might matter to you. And you can do some things like, you know, do some stats or do some categorization of things, and you can understand a little bit about yourself as well. It's always interesting to me to look back at my blog and go, what do I actually write about? Because I realize, like, I hate reporting services, right? You know, certain things I really don't like and certain things I find interesting, and those are the things I tend to blog about at the time. Uh, write small, discrete posts. Most hiring managers, if you get past that minute and they're looking at your resume, they may spend two or three more minutes just glancing at your blog or your profile and going, what else is interesting on here? So give them something small. The other thing is I've had plenty of people look at my blog and then ask me questions about some of the last 10 things on my blog in an interview, which is amazing because I just wrote about that. So I know all about it. <laughs> I have all the answers handy. Uh, this is something interesting. And it's about you, right? Write about the things you do in your career. Be professional here, right? Write about things that matter. And I'll show you some examples here. Uh, here, Dave Levy wrote this thing on uh, IF or VLFs. This is the whole post. It probably takes you know him 15 minutes. I bet all of you could do this in. 30 or 40 minutes if you had to do some research. We just kind of write about what I did. I, I found some information online. Here's what this kind of thing is a problem for me in this particular topic area. Okay. Dave, uh, Paul Randall wrote this blog. This is the entire thing, right? Paul Randall used to write code for SQL Server and a storage engine, and he writes this blog about latency. Again, he says, I looked at this white paper from Jimmy May and Denny Lee, and these are the things, the summary of what I see. What do I think about this? That's what you're conveying to the person that's looking at this. Uh, Jeff Atwood, anybody know Stack Overflow? So Jeff Atwood writes his blog. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but in the uh, last couple national elections in the U.S., things were a little contentious. I don't know if you guys noticed that at all. But um, So Jeff, you know, he's done Stack Overflow and Discord and other things. But on his blog, he's written about programming and hardware and things for years. But in the election cycle, he started to write about his opinion. And he upset a lot of people because we all know you have opinions. We don't necessarily want to hear them when we're talking about something else. Now, I know it's the world of social change and there are a lot of different things, but still, we have to get some things done at work that are separate from the way we might discuss how the rest of the world works. Right? So you just want to be careful about doing something like this. My friend Mike Walsh in uh, New Hampshire, just southeast of here, his Christian faith is very important to him. So he actually does write about that along with his blog. Right? This is actually a consulting site. But Mike understands there's a certain percentage of people that will not hire him or call him because he does this. Right? He's made a conscious decision. And I think that's okay. Just make, make conscious decisions. Right? More and more, I, I, I guess I preach to people that you should be deliberate in how you move your life forward. You only get one, in case you hadn't heard. It goes fast. Coming from somebody that's over 50, it goes fast. So be deliberate and do things that matter to you. Uh, my friend Brian Kelly is a great EBA, but he's also a youth pastor. He writes some great sermons on here. He has his blog, The Goalkeeping DBA, where he writes those. But this is all for his faith. He actually has a separate blog where he writes about his career. 
And if on his resume, this is the one that's linked. This is the one that he presents in an interview. And the other one he sends to his community, right? It's a different place. But he knows that this is important to me, but it's also separate from my career, from my job. Those are the things I'm doing. How do you blog? A, get permission, like ask your boss, your husband, wife, partner, whatever, right? It's just polite to just ask. And then, you know, be smart about how you do things. Don't, don't disclose passwords, right, IPs, right? I think common sense applies here. And then the other thing is, too, you're not writing news here. You're writing about your career. This is a long-term thing. So be consistent. What I normally say to people is write 10 posts, like open up Word and just write 10 posts, right? 10 one-page things that say I explain A, B, C. And then see how long that takes you. Right? It might take you 10 weeks, might take you 20 weeks, whatever. But then you'll have an idea of what I can schedule and say, here's a consistent thing. Because people that may go to your blog for the purposes of interviewing you or, or learning about you will just kind of glance at this. And so we just want them to see some consistency. But more important, I don't want you to stop, start and stop, and then I don't know, did you stop learning anything? Are you not good at it? Do you realize you, you know, uh, do you not want to write stuff in email and online? Because does anybody not have to write stuff at work? Does anybody only write code? None of us, right? <laughs> we have to communicate with everybody. Uh, don't copy other people's posts. Don't copy other people's posts. Don't copy other people's posts. I said it three times, rule of Beetlejuice says you will no longer do that. I don't know if you're dumb. I don't know if you're lazy. I don't know if you're dishonest. I don't know what, but there's no good impression. Write about what you think about other people have written. Right? There's nothing wrong with using books online. It's a template. I'm using a blog for myself, Michael, somebody else. But just write about what you think, what it means to you. Uh, learn to be good at writing. Please learn how to use a comma and the capital letter and everything else because communication skills do matter. The step above blogging would be I want to write articles that are published somewhere. Right? In a magazine, there's a few of those around online somewhere. Right for me, it's SQL Server Central. In this case, what you're trying to do is you are trying to teach somebody something. And so you have to be a little more deliberate about it. And often somebody else will comment on your work. So uh, like high school, you have to write an essay. You write an essay by you tell me what you're going to tell me, tell me, tell me what you told me. That's how you write an essay. And that's how you write an article. Right? Give me a high level, give me the details, and then summarize what you did. Yeah. Lots of places out there will help you work on it. Friends will help you. Please, uh, it's something to think about. It. You could write a book. Uh, books are long projects. There are actually two good things about writing a book. Number one is you put it on your CV, which is highly impressive. Can't tell you how impressive it is. Number two is you get a copy to your mom, and she loves it, absolutely <laughs> loves it. There's nothing else good that comes out of this. But there are opportunities out there, and um, it's something to think about. I would say blog a little bit or write articles before you get started, but uh, books are highly impressive. Like I've had people call me for an interview because I wrote a book, which is incredibly silly, but it, it does happen. You could do what I'm doing here. So how many of you want to trade places with me? How many of you want to finish the rest of this? Who's scared to come up here? Who's scared to raise their hand? Nobody's throwing anything. You know, I was talking earlier with Michael about this. Like, if you come up here and speak, whether you do this for two people at work or you know a team of ten, or you come to the SQL Saturday, uh, everybody wants you to succeed. They just want to learn something. They want to enjoy it. So, it's not for everybody, but it's something worth trying because we always have to make a presentation, or an argument, or a debate, whether it's in a small group or a large group. And this is a very, very valuable skill. And I'll tell you, in high school, I was terrified of standing up in front of thirty of my friends. Uh, and I learned how to do it, and you could do it too. And it is impressive, and it is a valuable skill to be able to stand in front of a group of people, whether that's few or many, and deliver information to them. It's good practice for working with others, uh, and it feels good. And again, mom loves it, but it is just an impressive thing to do. And it does impress people that uh, hire. I talked to again a couple people today, and they said, we see that you've spoken somewhere, it stands out to us because it means I know I can put you in front of clients or somebody else and you can do a good job. The last thing, uh, I only put it on one slide, but you should document everything you do because you will forget and you never know when this information will come in handy. When you get called for a quick interview or something and, and you want to have a list of things I've done. Right? I want to have a list of things, stories, anything that I want to be able to present. I want to have that ready for me to look at. Uh, the other thing is, 
you, you want to let people know who you are and who you're not, right? So knowing that I did this well, I didn't do this well, is important to be able to talk about. And I always use this story here. I said, I'm going to let them know you're not this guy, so you want to differentiate. Does anybody know who that is playing the guitar there? Any of the older rock and roll fans in the I guess it's thinking hard. Uh, this is Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols, but it's not this Steve Jones. And I wouldn't trade places with him now, like maybe 20, 30 years ago I would, but not now. Right? So I want to let people know who I am and who I am not, what I'm good at, what I'm not, because I'm always searching for the job that matters to me. I don't need a job. And across my career, what I found is that the problems I saw in technology are roughly the same everywhere, like the DBA developer job is a job. But the people I work with matter a lot. I gotta like the management and I gotta like the people I work with. I gotta feel comfortable in the culture. So I want you to be deliberate and find the job that works best for you. And that may not be the job that the person next to you really wants, but find the thing that matters to you. And I'll leave you with this last thing. So uh, I want you to work on your career. I want you to grow your skills. I'm glad you're taking time out of this Saturday to come here, but you have to live your life as well. So I'm over 50. I've got more life behind me than in front of me. That's just a fact. And I've had way too many friends die before 50 in my life. We work so that we can live and have purpose, but we don't live to work. So you have to find balance in life. So your friends, your faith, your hobbies, your family, please spend time on those things as well. Those are incredibly important. But don't neglect your career either. Find a balance here. And that's it. Uh, meet some people today. You've got half a day left or a few hours left. Uh, Please update your resume once in a while so that it's ready to go. Don't fill out evals there. That's incorrect. I meant to take that off. Uh, you should have a QR code or something that, to do evals. But uh, he's got the QR code. He's going to walk around to everybody and show it to your phone. But we want, no, no, you, you walk around. No. Uh, the evals help. Like they help, I mean, all the speakers get better if you have something specific you say. But they help the event too. If there's something you think we could do better, worse, whatever. Uh, we, we certainly want to make this better next year. Uh, please feel free to contact me at any of these places if you want. Reach out. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Hopefully you enjoy the day. If you've got questions, I'll be around. Just grab me somewhere, somehow, sometime. All right? Thank you. All right, everybody fill this out. No, no, all, all of you come up here and fill it out now. No. Yeah, yeah. It's up here if you want to take a picture. <laughs>